What is up, my friends? Welcome to this video. We are going to talk about capitulation in the markets. We're going to talk about quantitative easing a little bit, and we're going to catch back up with the gold manipulation case uh, with JP Morgan. So just a little roundup of news going on around and things that are adding the the breadcrumbs that are adding to the storyline here. I hope you guys are starting to through the you know these last five or six months starting to really piece together what's going on. That is my core intention with these videos with these global economic reports to fill you in on stuff that you probably weren't familiar with. This is for people who are maybe too busy or don't know where to find this stuff or don't really know what's going on to keep their hand on the pulse of the global economy. This is for you guys. So if you like that action, go ahead and click the thumbs up button, but let's dive into it. So a major bank, City, somebody from Citibank, capitulates. This may be time for a helicopter money drop. Remember, this has oftentimes been referenced. I've brought it up a few times. It's talked about as sort of a joke. Hey, we'll just show up with helicopters and drop money from the sky, they are more than willing to do that. And uh, they've proven it. They have laws that will support that between different things like the TARP Act, which was rolled out on the back end of the last economic crisis that fueled some, I don't know, somewhere between $1 trillion and $29 trillion of bailout money, apparently. Um, I'm guessing more towards the latter. They have these mechanisms in place now so that they can really do whatever they want. And so the thing you got to understand about where we're at right now, this uh, Keynesian economic model is really no different than an ADD kid that you've given a ton of caffeine or sugar to and you're just you've got him so wound up he's literally bouncing off the walls and you pray 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 on your knees that he does not start to come down so coming down in this market would be people stop spending this market with quantitative easing fractional reserve banking is propped up on spending consumerism and if that stops it's like a game of musical chairs if that that slows or stops in any sort of way we will see a deflationary event which only is important because we are living in an inflationary economic model so it would be catastrophic because nobody's expecting it so that's why it's a bad thing in this in this sort of economic model that we're operating in at other times and with other assets you don't have to worry about that like with gold it's a different story because that's a deflationary currency with uh, cryptocurrencies bitcoin ripple stellar really any cryptocurrency that is decentralized and has a limited supply it could be considered a decentralized de deflationary currency as well. Anyways, I'll ignore all the minutia. You can read through all this. I, I did not at all. A lot of it goes into some of the depths of policy uh, and how that's working and operating right now. You can read through this if you want. It just, I think, breaks down inter the actual interest rates of what's going on. Okay, so let's just talk about this. Uh, this is a city strategist. They are remaining unnamed at this point <laughs> for, with good reason. Most estimates of today's neutral real policy rate for the U.S. hover between 0.5% and 1%. For the euro area in Japan, many estimates are negative. That represents a, d a dramatic decline from the levels seen before 2000. This situation is unlikely to be reversed anytime soon. Despite the fourth industrial revolution lurking in the wings, economy-wide productivity growth is stagnant at best. Aging populations boost private savings rates and weaken the incentives to invest. Fiscal desaving and enhanced public sector capital formation can rise the neutral real rate rate, but are constrained, especially in the U.S., by already excessive general government deficits and a rising public debt burden. A lower real interest rate does, of course, make public debt servicing easier, other things being equal. If the lower neutral real interest rate is the reflection of a lower underlying growth rate of potential output, fiscal space may not be enhanced significantly once both drivers of fiscal sustainability are allowed for. One implication for monetary policy is that this may be the time for helicopter money drops, a temporary fiscal stimulus funded by a permanent increase in the stock of central bank money. This makes even more sense when inflation continues to undershoot the inflation target, as is the case in the U.S. and even more so euro area in japan there you have it the very first endorsement of the helicopter drop and you know what's funny about this is mike maloney's been talking about this shit on his channel for a long long time well here it is my friends it is uh officially now on the table of conversation okay next we have a quick update on quantitative easing uh here we go okay according to the fed we have another six months of quantitative easing at 35 billion per month or a total of 210 ish billion i've heard around 300 billion as well which will only take their balance sheets to a bit less than 3.8 trillion and what's interesting about this is this is all remember temporary quantitative easing that ben bernanke enacted and kind of sold the public on 
and here we are still doing it. Quantitative easing, in case you didn't know, is they print money and they give it out to the banks and the banks spend it. So they buy treasury notes, bonds. Uh, it's just cash that they are given, essentially. The reason why that is occurring, because that keeps this kind of ADD, rambunctious insanity going on. That's why, if you look around, it's funny how everything is now supporting this, right? Everything falls apart and breaks really quick. You have a new Apple iPhone release every single year. Uh, Steve Jobs definitely didn't do it like that when he was running the show. Samsung phones every year, new monitor tech, new, uh, new refrigerator tech, new microwave tech, every single year. Well, at this point, they kind of kind of do that. So I don't know if they've uh, gotten everybody engaged to do that or if that's just the natural progression of the insanity that's happened and the bias that's all kind of like taken over the group. I'm not sure. Okay, shifting gears here. I told you about the precious metals case. Okay, so commodities fraud and spoofing conspiracy from JP Morgan. All right, that was back in November. We talked about this. Uh, John Edmonds, pleaded guilty for spoofing. Apparently he was getting the okay and the information from his, the people above him. So there's a lot more people that are gonna be indicted in this situation and be brought into this. JP Morgan at this point has made no comments, of course, but some new interesting revelations here. First one is, is that federal judge tells traders that they can combine the cases uh, accusing JP Morgan of rigging metals trading. The first thing I wanna show you is, on Wednesday, the lawyer sent a letter to judge whatever, saying that they are having difficulty locating Edmonds to serve him legal papers and requested a 30-day extension to do so, which the judge granted on Thursday. They are, however, still talking and in communication with Edmonds' lawyer, but uh, that lawyer did not make comment on this when they were re when uh, CNBC reached out to them. So this is a little troubling. Um, the guy went missing, essentially, is what's going on now. The good news is that they can combine these cases, and there, are, there was some other interesting little tidbits that came out of this. JP Morgan, I told you, did not make comment. Un named co-conspirators. We see that. And then they said, at least they changed the wording to be, okay, the case alleges that JP Morgan manipulated the prices of palladi uh, platinum, palladium futures and options traded in New York, the NYMEX and gold and silver futures and options contracts traded on COMEX from at least 2009 which this is great because this opens it up to before then, it looks like they're now gonna join forces and turn this into a class action lawsuit. This could get uh, some momentum there, but we still don't know if the DOJ, et cetera, are gonna actually take this serious and do this because I have a feeling if they were to actually crack this open, that they're gonna find that it stems far and wide and it's gonna bring down a lot of people. And I don't know if they're gonna wanna do that because it could pull down the entire market. Now, we're talking outside of the realm of right and wrong here. We're talking about just in their best interest interest, the DOJ and um, FBI and whoever else is involved, SEC, you know, who's who and how far do they want to let this thing go down? Are they going to just let this guy go down by himself, uh, Edmonds, or are they going to bring the whole house down? Uh, and again, you know, I think if they brought the whole house down, it would be a lot of trouble. Uh, JP Morgan picked up the short contract on the back end of the failure of Baron Stearns. I don't know if you guys knew that. So they have been short for that long. And the interesting thing that I think a lot of people miss is that the metals markets are extremely easy at this point to manipulate. It's not cheap but it's easy to do. The metals markets are extremely simple to manipulate. Now, that doesn't mean easy, it's, it's expensive to do, but the reason why is because we are talking about a deflationary uh, currency here. We are talking about something with a set supply uh, a total set total supply, okay? So you can't necessarily manipulate that so easily and so simply if that's all there was to it. But then you you invite in futures and you invite in ETFs or electronically traded funds, AKA paper trading and fake gold and silver, and you can manipulate the price because when demand starts to go up, then you can manipulate that by purchasing and selling ETFs. So think of it like two separate subcategories within a market. And as one goes up, you can sell the other. And and also too, it makes it fairly simple to hedge your position in the market as well, which JP Morgan has been uh, short that whole time. They're hedging their position obviously as well. The point here is that a lot of people think that this is not true because there's no possible way that you could be cheating here. The people that are in this market have been shouting this for years and years and years and nobody's listening. So they're finally all at the edge of their seat hoping, gosh, let's hope that they take this serious and they actually do something about this because like I said, they've known about this for a long time. There's been talks about this in cryptocurrency as well, in Bitcoin. Now, 
there might be a mild amount of manipulation from whales uh, going on right now, but in Bitcoin, but until ETFs are rolled out, it's going to be a lot harder for you to manipulate Bitcoin. Okay. Now there, it might've been this big, you know, this big cartel similar to the gold and silver cartels. And they were working with news agencies and things like that to suppress or pump the price of Bitcoin. And that's what's caused a lot of the price up until this point. I think, no, I think futures are a bigger driver, just like futures are still a bigger driver in gold, silver, palladium, platinum. Futures are a much bigger driver of the market in Bitcoin right now. Right now. Now, if they introduce ETFs, it would allow and invite in a lot of people to then be able to manipulate if they've got enough position size um, to manipulate the price. And uh, as supply and demand fluctuates, they could counteract that with their own moves, right? So anyways, that's what I got for you today, my friends. Keeping an eye on a couple other things. I heard Russia just made a huge purchase, 31 tons of gold. And that's becoming more and more interesting how much gold that China and Russia are accumulating. They've got the SCO organization that they're working with. They've got the One Belt Road, uh, Silk Road initiative that's going on that seems to have excluded the United States. The IMF seems to be out there on its own as well, collecting up gold. It's uh, number three up until two, uh, March 2019, number three holder of uh, gold and they seem to be kind of wanting to make their own rules with a dual currency system. So there is a lot of insanity going on around right now. But uh, be on the lookout because I'll be shooting more videos soon about these things. If this is your first time to the video, maybe somebody shared it, maybe you saw it in a playlist, suggested videos, mm -hmm. go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification. This is the stuff we talk about. Every single week uploading fresh content. If you got something to say, love to hear from you. Go ahead and comment below. I'll check that out. And until next time, friends. Bye. Bye.